Infants coming to the Sims 4 is like the only thing us Simmers can focus on right now, and it's stirring up lots of feelings for people. So I figured, hey, let's do a speed build focused on babies and chat about all this news. With a new life stage coming to The Sims, people are having conflicting opinions about what this may mean for the 100 Baby Challenge. Some players are saying rip to the challenge already, while others are saying that they're actually more interested in trying the Baby Challenge once the new infant update comes. I decided to lean into this and create a 100 Baby Challenge home on hard mode for those of us who want to suffer even more with all of this. So we're on the Chieftain's Villa lot in Sulani, and I actually made three versions of this lot depending on what difficulty you want to start the baby challenge on. The first one we're working on here is the hardest lot to start your founder on. Normally in the 100 baby challenge, you start out with 20,000 simoleons. For this one though, I wanted to amp up the difficulty even more, so I took inspiration from Sims Legacy challenges and brought the starting funds down to only 1,800 simoleons. It was definitely difficult to build something with so few simoleons that still had enough necessities to make sure your sims kids don't get taken away by social services right away. We definitely couldn't afford a home with walls, but the standard flooring and ceilings are free, so I made this little lean-to shack sort of thing. I ended up moving it to be on a diagonal because each diagonal tile is slightly larger, yet costs the same amount and has the same tile count, so you get more for your money. We're also in Sulani here, so at least the weather should stay fairly nice and you won't have to deal with freezing temperatures while you're living outside. If this wasn't hard enough for you yet, don't worry, I also gave all these homes additional lot challenges too. Each version I made has the off the grid, simple living, and reduce and recycle lot challenges. So not only do you have to raise 100 kids to adulthood, you have to do that with no electricity, while producing your own food, and managing your trash output. There's also a wash bucket and clothesline on the second and third versions of this home, so you'll have to do laundry too. I wanted to amp up the difficulty of this house while still having it make sense and not be completely insufferable. I think the challenges and location make sense for a boho, hippie sim to come live off the land and start a big family. Now if you're even more of a glutton for punishment, all I can say is add more lot challenges and start on a blank lot with zero simoleons. That 1800 simoleons got spent so quickly, but we got a roof over our heads, a way to make food, places to sleep for our founder and a toddler, a toilet bush, and a sink to wash up in. It's not much, but you'll be able to get by, and the weather should be nice so you can start going around the world, meeting potential donors, and earning simoleons right away. Thankfully, there are plenty of ways to do so in Sulani, gardening, fishing, beach combing, scuba diving, etc. So that's working in your favor at least. As you can see, we only have like 9 simoleons left, so actual landscaping was out of the question. Instead, I did a bunch of free debug landscaping to fill out the rest of the lot and make it blend into the world. Usually scrolling through the debug menu to find things is a pain in the ass, but thankfully I have Twisted Mexi's Better Build By mod installed to help. This mod is such a lifesaver, especially for debug, as it organizes and tags all the debug items so that it is so much easier to find things. It also allows you to duplicate and change swatches on these items, as well as so many other helpful features. This mod is so essential, I keep it in my game at all times. I'll put a link in the video description in case you want to download it for your game too. That's pretty much it for the 1800 Legacy Starter version. We'll take a tour at the end of all these homes so you can get a better look at each of them. Next up is the 20,000 budget build. This lot costs 5,000 simoleons, so we're actually working with 15,000 simoleons to build and furnish this place. For this version, I wanted to make an Airstream trailer as our main home. This was actually my initial concept for this 100 baby challenge starter. I envisioned an earthy sim leaving their old city life and packing into an airstream to move out into the jungle and live off the land. I used this boat trailer as a base and now that we have curved walls we can get much closer to that rounded airstream look. In order to set this room on top of the wheels you have to copy it onto the second level, delete the room on the first floor, then you can use the foundation adjustment tool in the center to raise or lower the room to whatever height you want.
we don't have a good silver metal wall with a matching roof texture, so I went with this white metal siding and roofing from Eco Lifestyle. It's not the same, but it's as close as I could get, and I make it work. I ended up going with a more neutral boho color scheme with lots of whites, creams, and browns in this build to complement the white airstream. To make sure I had enough money for the essentials that I wanted to include here, I went ahead and grabbed out some of those items before I got too carried away with decorating and blew my whole budget. This is a tiny trailer with a starter home budget, so there was no way I was going to fit enough inside for a full household of kids. So I put a tent out here that the kids and teens can sleep in until you earn enough simoleons to expand the home. Since this lot is off the grid, I wanted to be sure we had a solar panel, wind turbine, and water collector. I also made sure to put down a recycling machine to help with the trash management, as well as a few planter boxes to start growing food, since this lot also has the reduce and recycle and simple living lot challenges on it. The inside space I prioritized for the founder and the toddlers and babies. They can't really take care of themselves like the kids and teens can, so having them inside, out of the elements, and close to their parents seemed like the best option. The kitchenette is also in here, so it's easier to feed them. Keeping our founder healthy and energized is also a priority, so I decided a tea maker was a must for this hippie sims kitchenette. To give the illusion of a little privacy, I put up a few curtains to block off the parents' bedroom space. Not actually a separate room, cause I couldn't afford the wall, but curtains are better than nothing and they look cute too. I did test it and this bed is still functional. Lighting in here was a challenge since only certain lights work off the grid. That candle room divider from Spa Day worked as a nice multifunctional headboard. It doesn't give off a ton of light, but moody lighting in the bedroom is probably a good thing when you're trying to get pregnant from as many different sims as possible. But yeah, it's going to be kind of dimly lit in here just because the off the grid lighting isn't great and there just wasn't enough budget to put in more lights. Saving up for a candle making station would be a really good hobby and thing to work towards for this challenge. Outside we've upgraded to a shower tub combo, not just a sink finally. We still have the toilet bush, but at least everyone can take real baths and showers. There's also some playground equipment so your toddlers and kids can work on their skills. Teens will just have to focus on their school projects and maybe go fishing or swimming if you want them to have a hobby. If you eventually get a composting toilet, that bug hotel should help with managing that. Next to the garden, I put a market table so you can sell extra produce, fish, and any collectibles you find. If you want more of a challenge, you can make it so that you can only sell items from this table at a 0% markup instead of just selling straight from your inventory. But that just depends on how serious you want to be on this hard mode baby challenge lot. That sounds way too hard for me, but hey, you do you. Speaking of hard mode 100 baby challenge, infants are coming soon and I suspect they alone are going to bring a whole nother level of difficulty to this challenge as well as just raising kids in the sims in general. I know so many people are excited about the infant update and the new growing together expansion pack but I have mixed feelings, mostly frustrated disappointed ones I think. On the one hand, infants do look fun and like they'll help bring in more family gameplay dynamics at least in conjunction with the expansion pack. But on the other hand, I'm not completely sold on them. 
I just feel like they're a distraction from the core issues that brought them to us in the first place. And that's the terrible babies we already have. So let me explain. What spurred this whole new life stage is that the babies we already have are so bad that people begged for updates to them. Yet instead of doing that, the Sims team is giving us a new infant life stage. Hey, I get it if the Sims team cannot fully free bassinet babies and have them do everything the new infants are promised to do, but they could and should give us some updates to them so that the babies we have don't feel like even more of a wasted life stage once the new infants come out. Here are some things that I think can and should probably be updated. First of all, the way babies look needs to be addressed. Their graphics are so bad and need to be fine-tuned so they don't look like low-quality potatoes. The skin tone glitches they've had for years should be fixed and expanded to more than just like three options. Second, there can and should be more customization available for them. We should have at least a few onesie options to change them into that don't require us to buy a pack and knit it for them. And we should have a few more crib or bassinet options that we can put them in. Even if the bassinet they get when they are born is still the same standard ones, at least have a few cute ones we can buy from build mode after they're born to put them in that aren't just more stylized occult ones. Third, there should be more interactions since of all ages can do with them, even if it has to be tied to the bassinet. Imagine being able to stand there and read them a story or sing them to sleep, having your child sims try sharing a toy with the baby, or anything else to help them feel a little less like an object you shove in the corner and wait to age up. The fact that the babies we already have aren't mentioned at all in any of the update nor expansion pack coverage I've seen is worrying to me. Yet again, babies are an afterthought and are not being addressed in any way. Instead, we're getting shiny new things to distract us from the core issues that aren't being fixed, which sounds all too familiar. Again, I get it if it's not feasible to make huge changes to bassinet babies without breaking core things in the game, but we can and should get some updates to them at least. So yeah, I'm excited to see the new family gameplay and dynamics that come with the new infants and expansion pack, but I'm also feeling a bit frustrated and disappointed that the issues that spurred these additions seem to be getting ignored. Let me know how you're feeling in the comments. Are you excited, disappointed, mixed, or could you just not care less? Alright, enough with venting about the infant update and the Growing Together expansion pack. Let's get back to the build. We're on to the third and final version I made for this lot. For this one, I gave myself a $50,000 budget to make a home for your sims once they've become a little more established and have saved some simoleons to expand their house. The main thing I added here was this stilted treehouse building. I was inspired by a treehouse I saw on Pinterest that had a similar shape, the octagonal room on the bottom, and a diagonal rectangular room on top. I kept it small still and gave it a unique shape so that it looks like it could be something your sims built themselves over time. The majority of the living space and activities are still outside, but now everyone has real rooms that are fully indoors. This top room I made into the parents' bedroom. This spot would probably be the most peaceful area on this lot because it's away from most of the kids, no toddlers can bother you up here, and it has great views. Yeah, they deserve the best room in the house if they are popping out all these kids. It's a small room, but I tried to make it pretty and cozy still. There's this little bump out that I added when I built the shell just to give it a little bit more interest. It's only one tile wide, so I decided to take advantage of this space by making it into a little nursery type thing. I put a bassinet at each end so the babies are close to their parent to take care of them throughout the night, but since it's technically in a separate room from the parent's bedroom, they won't wake them up if they start crying. Getting enough sleep to take care of all these kids plus support the household while still having enough energy to date around is essential in the 100 baby challenge. So I thought this room setup worked well to meet this within the limited space we have.
downstairs is the kids and teens room. They've been upgraded from sharing a tent finally. Yay for them. I definitely spent too much money on this room, but I really wanted to go all out with the kids treehouse theme I did down here. We've got two sets of bunk beds in here cause that is like the required bed type for a treehouse, And we have a shit ton of kids to house at all times. I found this ceiling garland with the leaves on it while I was working on the room upstairs and I swear I have never noticed this item before but it is perfect for this nature themed kids room. Apparently I need to look at this ceiling decorations category more cause it's not even a new item. It's from that free holiday celebrations pack which I've had like since I first got the game. Anyone else never noticed this item existed before? I kept with the earthy boho vibes down here too, but added a little more color since it is a kid's room. I especially love these layered rugs paired with the muted greens and oranges on the bedspread. It's eclectic and earthy without being over the top colorful like many of the boho swatches are in the game. I also made the deck here into a sort of extension of the kid's room. I put a few skill building items out here. We've got a violin and a guitar, as well as a kid's science lab. Inside there's a couple activity tables, some toys, and a scout board, cause the kids living in this household would of course be master scouts after living their whole lives outside. So I went a little overboard with the plants on the exterior of the treehouse and spent way too much time and money placing them all. I just can't help myself with plants and I definitely get a little out of hand when landscaping. This is a jungle treehouse though, so I feel like too many plants is justified here, okay? It just looks so good covered in vines that I had to do it. I'm sure you could delete some of them to get a bit more money back to spend on actually useful things for your sims without sacrificing the aesthetics too much. Which would probably be the advisable thing to do, but I'm someone who prefers form over function a bit too much sometimes, so I'm leaving it. I decided to utilize the space underneath the house by making it into the kitchen dining area. I wanted to close it off a little bit to look more like a finished room, but still keep it quite open and breezy. So I put in some open windows to fill in a few wall spaces here. I really wanted to use those Eagle Lifestyle spinning panel ones, but they don't come in a wood tone that's dark enough, which is a shame because they are gorgeous. So I used these slotted ones from Island Living instead. Again, with this lot being off the grid, the appliance options are limited. Initially, I really wanted to use that clay grill, but you're going to need a real oven to bake birthday cakes for your sims, so I reluctantly swapped it out for that rustic base game stove. Having a big table where everyone can sit together for meals would be important for this family. So I use this big reclaimed table with a bunch of mismatched chairs and of course more layered rugs underneath. The space under the deck I use as a sort of utility area. I put the trash and recycling machine down here as well as a candle making station. Making candles is probably going to be a great hobby to get into to help with the off the grid lighting challenges. 
I'm not sure if teens can make candles, but if they can, that'd probably be a great chore to put them on. Hey, you gotta get as much free help from those teens as you can. Since I moved the parents' room to the treehouse, I had extra space in the Airstream, which I made into a bathroom. I was gonna put the bathtub in here, but I decided to keep that outside and instead put a couple of those communal showers from Discover University so multiple sims can shower at once, which will be important with a full household. The budget was looking quite slim here, so I sold a few decor items so that I could build a wall in between the showers and toilet area. This way, Sims can use the showers and toilet at the same time without embarrassing each other. Again, this is going to be really helpful when you have 8 Sims in your household. The rest of the trailer I kept as the toddler's room, but I upgraded it a little and we've got 3 toddler beds in here now. Was spending the extra money on these eco lifestyle canopy beds the responsible thing to do for the whole family? No but it was necessary for the aesthetics and my happiness when looking at this room, so I splurged. I hardly ever get to use this candle cupboard thing from City Living, and it definitely fits the hippie nursery vibes. Plus, it works off the grid, so I had to use it here, even if its light output is pretty pathetic. We also have a couple block sets and toddler potties for them to work on their skills. Wabbit tablets are better for skill building, but we don't have electricity here, and even if we did, this would definitely be a no electronics household, so low tech toys only. I also made sure to keep the shower tub combo we had before and just moved it behind the trailer so that the toddlers can be bathed more easily. I wanted to expand our garden, but our budget was almost gone, so I swapped out those handmade planter boxes for these garden beds since they're significantly cheaper. It's probably been years since The Sims first moved here, so those old wooden planters probably needed to get replaced anyway. Now that they're also more experienced eco-gardeners, they've probably transitioned into a in-ground, no-till gardening style. I swear I think about and rationalize the littlest shit way too much like it's just a game, but that's just the way my mind works. So yeah, I guess there's a whole story behind swapping out the garden beds in case you were wondering. I'm sure you weren't, but now you know. But that's it for the speed build. So let's get into live mode so we can get a better look at each of these builds and you can figure out which difficulty level you want to start your baby challenge with. First up, we have the 1800 Legacy Challenge Starter Home. If you can call this a home, it's more of a shack. It's a nice shack for sure, but it's still a shack. We've got a bonfire out front to roast up some food. I was testing this before the tour to make sure that this is the fire pit you can roast fish on, and it is, but for some reason it wasn't working with a simple living lot challenge on. Even when I had a fish in my inventory, the only thing I could roast were marshmallows, unless I turned off Simple Living. So you may want to turn off that lot challenge or earn a little more money to replace it with the Sulani Volcanic Barbecue Searer, which does work with Simple Living and lets you cook a fish dinner when you have fish in your inventory. Unless you like the idea of having your sims lift off of roasted marshmallows. So yeah, a little bug I found with this that I thought I should give you a heads up about. Inside we have the cheapest bed in the game, this debug one from Eco Lifestyle. I think it looks alright, and these windows definitely help it feel more like a full room, even though there are no real walls. On the opposite side we have a toddler bed and mini fridge so you can store some leftovers to feed your kids. There's enough space in here to fit a couple bassinets too, so you can start popping out babies right away. Finally on the side we have the trash can, sink, and toilet bush. So all your basics are covered. No bath, but you can wash your hands and clean up your toddlers a little in the sink. Next up, we have the standard 20,000 budget 100 baby challenge starter home. Like I was saying, this was my initial inspiration for this hard mode build, but I figured I should also make an even harder version for those of you who can't seem to get enough punishment in this game. So you have the option to sort of choose your own difficulty level. You can start with this build for the standard 100 baby challenge start, or you can begin with the first version we just saw, then use this as an upgrade when you earn enough simoleons. There's this whole garden area over here. You're definitely going to want to forage for some things to plant right away, since the simple living lot challenge is active. There's a table to sell your wares for more of a challenge. If you're not into that extra work though, just sell it and maybe buy some bees or chickens or something. There's not much room in the Airstream, so the kids and teens get to share this lovely tent. It's not ideal, but we're working with a tight budget and they can fend for themselves. They do get a cozy fire pit at least. 
Inside is the parents' bedroom, or I guess bed area, it's not really a room. It's simple, but I tried to make it cute with the budget we had. Here we have the tiniest kitchenette, just enough to prep a salad and grab a tea to fuel our exhausted hippie parent. There's one toddler bed in here, a way too expensive one, but it's pretty, so it's worth it to make this place look less sad. There's space for a couple bassinets too, so all the little ones can be close to their parent for ease of care. Out back we have our trash and recycling area. I haven't played on a lot with reduce and recycle on. It sounds like quite the challenge, so if you played with it, let me know how difficult it actually is. Also back here we've got our power and water collection area and the kids playground. Alright, let's go ahead and check out the final version of this lot next. Last up is our upgraded $50,000 budget home. So this isn't a lot to start the challenge on officially, but if you want to save yourself a little pain by skipping the starter home versions, go right ahead and start here. This area is pretty similar to before, I just expanded our garden a bit. So let's go up to the parents' bedroom first. It's small, but it feels quite cozy and peaceful up here. Whoever is parenting this challenge definitely deserves their own oasis room. On the side here is our mini nursery. There are gorgeous views in here, which is a nice consolation if you're having to wake up in the middle of the night to take care of the babies. Down here, we have probably my favorite room, the teen and kids bedroom. It's cluttered and colorful without being too bright and overwhelming. I'd wanna spend all my time playing in here as a kid. Even as an adult, I wanna hang up here. On their deck, we've got a few activities for them to do too. This whole level just belongs to the kids, really. Underneath the treehouse, we have the kitchen. I did test those stairs and they do work, which I was pleasantly surprised about. This kitchen is simple, but I think it really suits this place. This place would have great ventilation in case you burn anything, so that is a plus. I love this big mismatched dining set with the eclectic rugs. It's neutral, but it still looks lived in and bohemian. Back outside are our utility areas. We've got the laundry back here, then under the deck is the recycling station and candle crafting area. I put a couple more garden beds along this walkway to make an orchard with eventually. I love the idea of having harvestable trees lining this path, but plant whatever you want here. This is our extra outdoor bath area, complete with a toilet woohoo bush, whatever you need it for really. Inside the airstream is our toddler room. Those expensive beds were definitely worth it. At the back is our indoor bathroom. Having each section in a different room should help make this work better with such a big household since multiple sims can use it at the same time. I did make a founder for this challenge who I'd imagine would live here. Here she is, very lovely. She's on my gallery if you want to download her too. That's everything. No matter if you're feeling excited, disappointed, or a bit mixed about infants coming to The Sims 4, I hope you have fun playing with your crunchy, hippie sims on this lot. Whether you want to start with the 100 Baby Challenge Ultimate Hard Mode version or the Standard Start version, this is guaranteed to be quite the challenge even before the infant update. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. It truly helps so much, especially for such a small channel like mine. I have plenty more builds coming, so if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.